Welcome back to our autoimmune series where we are going diagnosis by diagnosis and teaching you how and where to look to find your answers if you've been diagnosed with these autoimmune issues. So if you haven't gone back and watched some of the other ones, make sure you go back and watch the ones on Hashimoto's and rheumatoid arthritis. And then today I'm going to cover fibromyalgia. So this one is near and dear to my heart because this was one of the main issues that I dealt with most of my life. So at eight years old, I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia. Looking back now, because they couldn't figure out what was all the stuff going on that was creating my chronic fatigue and my chronic pain, even as young as eight years old. Um, so I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia and I felt like I had that label most of my life. And it was really easy to blame that diagnosis when I didn't feel good or I was achy or I was getting headaches. It was always, oh, my fibromyalgia is flaring up. And some of you might feel that same way or use that same verbiage, like, oh, it's a fibro flare. Oh, it's my fibro. It just doesn't work anymore. <laughs> We've got to figure out why all of that is going on in your body. Because for me, I can honestly say I no longer have any fibromyalgia symptoms, totally gone, but I had to figure out exactly what was creating my flare ups. So today I'm going to share with you my test results. Some of the main, main things that I found for myself that were creating my chronic pain, my chronic fatigue, my joint pain, my swelling, my headaches, and from working with hundreds of people who have fibromyalgia, I often see these as really common triggers. Now, everyone is different, right? So your pattern might not look exactly like mine, but there are going to be similarities. If you're having some symptoms and you don't know why, these are gonna be great places for you to look in addition to several others that we'll cover in the autoimmune series. So first off, let's cover why they call fibromyalgia an autoimmune issue. So typically autoimmune is what they call something when they don't feel like they can figure out a reason, right? So we covered in our last video, they will tell you that an autoimmune disease is your body attacking itself, right? And we fully disagree with that. The body is never attacking itself for no reason. But with fibromyalgia, what's funny is there isn't really any diagnostic antibodies or testing. They just do it based off if these certain, you know, 18 points are sore and you have these types of symptoms, then we label you with this condition. But the reason why they call it an autoimmune issue is because they don't know the underlying cause, right? So now it's this kind of unknown mystery disease that a lot of people are suffering from. And trust me, I know the pain is very real. I've been there. I felt it. It sucks. All the symptoms are very real, but the diagnosis itself, I feel like is a little bit of a scapegoat. And I'm sure if you have it, you feel like that. It's like, oh, I've been diagnosed and then they didn't do anything else for me other than pain medications and muscle relaxers and telling me to eat better and maybe lose some weight, right? So for me, from an early age, I felt like I really had to dive in and figure out what was creating majority of my symptoms, which really is what led me to this kind of holistic life that we lead now is right from eight years old, I knew, I knew there was something physically wrong with my body and I wanted to figure out why. So what I'm going to show you guys today is part of my hormone panel, specifically the markers that I see very, very often in people with chronic fatigue and chronic pain. Now with any autoimmune issue, there's always the underlying immune system trigger that also needs to be addressed. So I'm not gonna share with you today um, some of my immune system labs, but remember, if you know my story, I had a reactivated Epstein-Barr virus, I had chronic infections in my gut, all of those combined with what I'm about to show you hormonally were the deep root causes of my autoimmune issue. And for most of you, especially if you have a complicated case, if you've been dealing with this for a long time, you probably have more than one trigger, right? We call them layers. <laughs> we have to get layer by layer by layer. I know for darn sure I did, had many, many, many layers um, that I had to work through. And honestly, I'm still working through because health is not a destination, it's a journey. But the more you know about your body and the more things that you can find to fine tune specifically to you, the easier this journey gets. So I'm gonna share with you some of my levels and the places that if you have fibromyalgia, chronic pain, chronic fatigue, and you haven't investigated the things I'm gonna share with you today, I think it's a really great next step for you. So let me pull up my hormone panel. Let's do it this way so you can see that big. Okay, awesome. So the first thing I wanna share with you guys is this value right here, which is my progesterone number. Now on my very first Dutch test, this one right here, I was 28 years old 
And my progesterone is all the way down here in this purple box, which if you can read that, I know it's small. It says postmenopausal range. At 28 years old, I had menopausal levels of progesterone. Now, one of the things I love to teach is you can look at a level, and that's good information, but your very next question needs to be why, right? So I could have looked at this test and I could have said, okay, my progesterone's low, let's put myself on some bioidentical progesterone, right? That would have been the quick, easy answer. But if I never asked myself why my progesterone was so low, that one quick fix would never have lasted, right? I might've felt better for a couple of weeks, maybe a few months, but eventually my symptoms would slowly start coming back and I wouldn't really get to the actual cause. So one of the things I wanna teach you today is low progesterone is very, very common in fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue, but it's because it's directly tied to your adrenal function and your body's ability to manage inflammation. So progesterone, here's what's so important to remember. All of these hormones are directly linked to other hormones. Your body doesn't just make progesterone over here and estrogen over here and cortisol over here. There are pathways and connections between all of these hormones. So somebody, if you followed my videos for a while, you should know this answer. Somebody in the comments tell me, what is progesterone the direct precursor to? What does it filter into after it's been made from progesterone? The answer is adrenal hormone, like cortisol and cortisone. Literally, progesterone now feeds into your adrenal function, yet when you go to your traditional doctors and they just test your hormone levels, they never make that connection. They'll just put you on a hormone when, in fact, that could actually be very dangerous or the wrong thing for you if you don't address why this is so low. So symptomatically, some of the things that come from progesterone are headaches, bloating, fatigue, insomnia, chronic pain, joint swelling, autoimmune issues. Those are all things tied with very chronically low progesterone, but we have to fix why. So let me show you. My symptoms were coming from my low progesterone, but my progesterone was low because of, and I'm gonna scroll down, this right here. So my adrenal pattern, if you can see this on the screen, your adrenals primarily make a couple of things. They're responsible for DHEA, they're responsible for cortisol, and then we also have this mechanism called cortisone, which is your body's way of protecting you from stress. So at 28 years old, I'd had fibromyalgia since I was eight years old. So we're going on two decades, I had chronic pain and chronic fatigue. Do you think that was maybe a little bit of a stress on my body, a little bit of a pressure on my immune system and my hormones, right? So I had spent 20 years being in high stress, high pain, feeling badly all the time, which eventually is going to wear your adrenal function out, right? So if you look at my pattern, and again, if you do just your basic blood work and you say they've tested your adrenal function and they've done a one point cortisol draw through blood and told you your adrenals are fine, you are missing like 50 other pieces of information to know if you really have an adrenal issue. Because let me show you this. If you were to have just looked at my free cortisol, which is this one here in the corner, on this given time, on this given day, you check my free cortisol, they would have said, your adrenals look great. Your free cortisol is spot on exactly where it should be. We don't think that this is cause for your chronic pain. But what they missed is when your body has been in chronic stress, it has protective mechanisms because too much cortisol, high stress, high cortisol over a long period of time can absolutely cause things like a heart attack, like a stroke, like major immune system issues. So my body had been in stress for so long that it started putting into place this protective mechanism for me. And what that is, is your body takes this very dangerous cortisol, right? This very excitatory, very inflammatory cortisol, and it deactivates it into what's called cortisone. Cortisone is also a function that happens in the adrenal glands, but this has more to do with inflammation and immune response. Come on people, what's fibromyalgia? An inflammatory and an immune autoimmune issue. This is one of the main places that need to be checked if you have fibromyalgia, because this is exactly what that causes. So on a blood draw, they wouldn't have checked my free cortisone. But on this pattern right here, which is the adrenal mapping page of the Dutch test, which is my favorite test on the face of the planet, but this one right here, 
my cortisone is sky high. The way I describe this pattern is when your cortisone is really high, it is like your body putting the brakes on everything. So this is the pattern I see when people are like, man, like I have brain fog. I feel like I used to be smarter than this. My joints ache. I'm swelling. I'm cloudy. I feel like it takes my body longer to recover. I feel like everything's going slower for me. That right there is this free cortisone pattern. And that was me to a T. Yet I had had plenty of blood work telling me my adrenals were fine, that on the surface, everything looked okay, but my body had taken too much stress, too much pain, too much inflammation, and stored it all over here in this protective mechanism that causes massive amount of inflammation and reduces your body's ability to heal. So when you have a lot of high cortisone, that's why people with fibromyalgia have a harder time recovering from injuries or one little thing might put you back, you know, six weeks of pain from one little slip and fall or somebody else would be just fine the next day. That is this inability to process injuries and immune system issues, which is why high cortisone patterns are very, very typically seen in chronic fatigue and chronic pain syndromes. So this for me was a giant aha moment because in addition to knowing what my immune system triggers were and my viral load was, when I found out this information about my body, it allowed me to make better choices on how to protect myself, one, as I'm healing, but two, now I know about my body forever that when I'm stressed, a good stress or a bad stress, even if I'm busy, like right now it's just a busy season for us. My babies are young, we're running businesses. I know that my body needs to be protected on the cortisone side so I don't flare up, so I don't get the headache, so I don't get the pain. So knowing this information is not just part of your keys in healing in the first place, it's how you're going to long-term protect your body. So in those seasons, now I know, okay, I'm gonna go in and I'm really gonna protect this cortisone pattern. I'm gonna make sure my cortisol is not deactivating as quickly as it was back here when I had massive pain and massive migraines. And since I do that, I don't get those flare-ups anymore. I mean, honestly, I know to a T, like I'll wake up and my triggers are, if my hands are sore, or I have this one place in the back of my neck on the left-hand side, if I wake up and that spot hurts or my hands are sore, I immediately go all in on protecting cortisone. And some of the ways I do that, I love things like resveratrol. I love really good high-dose anti-inflammatories. I use a lot of California poppy. I mean, for me, those are the herbs and things that work best from my patterns. But what I love about testing is knowing this, and if you know this about your body, I can teach you the right things to do to protect yourself long term, not just as you're going through this healing process. So testing is so valuable for all of those reasons. And these are values you just don't get from a blood drop. You just don't get from your standard hormone testing. That's why I love the mapping that you get um, from this Dutch test. So if you are suffering with fibromyalgia, chronic pain, chronic fatigue, any other kind of mystery, you know, they call them mystery or invisible illnesses. This adrenal mapping is huge for you. In addition to looking at your immune system triggers, figuring out this pattern for you is going to be a giant leap in the right direction. It was for me and it has been for hundreds and hundreds of people that I work with, with these types of issues. So I hope that helps somebody if you're still struggling with fibromyalgia and you still feel like there's no hope or you've had it for decades like I did, or maybe longer than me, um, figure this piece out. Let's see what this looks like and start moving in the right direction. So shoot me any questions, comments that you have. We'll keep checking on these. But there is another piece to unlock your why, your how, what caused your chronic pain and chronic fatigue is the difference between your cortisol and your cortisone pattern in your adrenal glands.